What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Odds Honest Truth. I am Kurt Gorbanoff, joined alongside Rich Wilhelm here for another week across the NFL. Another one is coming and gone. Uh, I had a bit of a cold week last week, but hopefully you guys still picked some winners and made some money. I think Rich gave out a, a couple of winners. Uh, we'll alternate off. weeks. So this, we'll alternate. Week. Uh, so this one's going to be all me. Uh, we will also be joined in a couple of minutes by uh, a fan favorite from last season, making his comeback, Alan Studer of the Stucast, uh, giving some college football plays, and he'll be he'll be joining us in just a couple of moments. Before we do, special shout out to everybody at the In the Money Media Network: Peter Thomas, Fornatel, Drew Coatney, Jonathan Kinchin. Uh, happy to be here. Make sure to like, subscribe, and uh, follow anywhere you you listen or watch. This content, whether that's YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, etc., give us a nice rating. It helps the show out a ton. NFL Week Three is upon us, but before we get to to the NFL, as mentioned, Alan Studer of the Stucast with some NCAA picks. He's got some good plays. He was he actually he hit last week. He shared in the comments on YouTube, and and he had some winners. So hopefully we can make a little money tomorrow and carry that bankroll on into Sunday. So without further ado, Alan Studer, take it away. Hey, guys. Thanks for uh, segueing over. It is the college football corner here. I am, of course, your returning host for the college football corner, Stu from the Stucast. And, yes, it's been a few weeks. I'm sorry. I know I have been out, been pushing out picks on the Stucast every Wednesday night, dropping it uh, over there with my friends over at NC Sports, one of the premier uh, handicappers in the college football space. Got my friends, my beat writer friends. We're chopping it up about college football. Check us out, the Stewcast. But for this show, Odds Honest Truth, got the phone call, and I was like, hey, yeah, I'd love to come back. Love to come be a part of the show again. College football corner time. Normally, throughout the rest of the year, I'm going to give you three plays. I'm going to give you three plays, but today, because I'm happy to be back, I'm going to give you a fourth. Let's start off right now, Friday night. Uh, I love the ACC. I feel like I got a good read on it right now. I'll start with the Friday night game in the Carrier Dome, not the JMA Wireless Dome. will never be that. Always. It was never the JMA Wireless. It was never. Orangeman laying nine to the Cavaliers from Virginia. And I'll be quite frank. I like the Syracuse line. I like the under. But the play I'm going to give you is the team total under for the Cavaliers. This year, Virginia is not what they were last year. Lost their entire offensive line. This might be the worst offensive line in the ACC. And yes, Duke, I know plays in the ACC. Brendan Armstrong's going to have a real problem with Michael Jones, who's one of the best pass rushers in the country statistically, if you're looking at PFF scores. They have struggled to put up points. Last week, it was a struggle to get to 16 against Old Dominion. It was a struggle to put anything on the board against uh, Illini. Barely beaten a... uh, Western Carolina team that I'm not sure is even remotely close to being good in the SOCON. So what do we look at with this Virginia team? Well, you have their OC from last year now over with Syracuse. Part of the reason Syracuse offensively has been a juggernaut, Garrett Schrader learned to throw. Brennan Armstrong's missing that. I think they struggle. Team total under 21 and a half. Book it. Another game. I love a couple things in this game. Uh, I like I like an over here. I think the over should hit, but I'm going to go with the side. I'm going to take the Clemson Tigers on the road, laying seven and a half as they head to Winston-Salem, which is a great small-time little uh, stadium. If you ever get the chance, go check it out. It's phenomenal. Um Clemson, look, they, last year this game was a shootout, and Clemson was limping into the game last year. One thing I love about Wake Forest, and this is true with a few teams out there, they will tell you exactly who they are. Great offense, the mesh, 
uh, Sam Hartman, A.T. Perry. I mean, it's it's beautiful. Defense is horrific. Defense is, is pure COVID. That, it, it's just horrible. Um, I think you're going to see it again t- this week. Clemson is going to be able to do things offensively. They've been building up. I think DJ Uyunglele, say that 12 times fast, has been um, running the ball at a more proficient rate than he was last year. I know he dropped a little bit of weight. Well, Shipley looks pretty solid on the ground, and and that defensive line is me. It's 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 a dominant D line, and defensively, you know, you got talent back there. I think this will be exactly what the game was last year: Clemson getting in the low forties, and and Wake Forest able to get into the high twenties. But that's where it ends. Wake Forest struggles when they play good defenses. I love Clemson here. I'm going to go to the fun belt. I love a game here. It's Thursday night game. Georgia State money line. I think Coastal Carolina is grossly overrated. Grossly overrated. This team defensively is not what they were. And offensively, it, it yes, they can put up points, but I, I think Grayson McCall is doing a lot of magic. And I think with what you see with Georgia State here is they have played they played South Carolina extremely close. Uh, that was a weird game. Don't look at the box score as much because uh, you'll see a, a 35-14 game. But Georgia State had the lead early in the third quarter, and then they had just a calamity on special teams back to back to back. Played UNC real tough, came back. Truist Field, yes, Truist Field, the baseball stadium. Not an easy place to play. I kind of like Georgia State as a dog, a short dog, two-point dog, but I like them at home. Give them to me on the money line. And, folks, my fourth game, a game I just I love. It is a game of the year for me. I'm already 1-0 on my game of the years. If you've been listening to the Stucash, you got that one. 1-0 on my game of the month. Got that one. I'm going – with Fordham, Ohio, over. Now, the line's not out. I don't know what the line is. I don't know what the total is. But I assure you this game is going over. Um, Fordham has one of the most prolific FCS offenses in the country. I mean, in all of FCS, this team can sling it. Their defense is an offense to everything that's holy. It is bad. It's, it, it might as well be non-existent. Ohio has shown the ability to score. Caitlin Work, um, they've got some, they've got some talent there with Tuggle. Um, defensively, eh, run of the mill, okay-ish Mac defense. But I think Fordham's gonna be able to get to 20 to 30 points. And I know Ohio's gonna score well over 30. Uh I could see this game being easily to mid 60s high 60s low 70s it could very easily get there and i think it will i a lot of value in these fcs teams undervalued because people don't watch them people don't know about them people don't like betting on them on them so there we go over fordham and ohio folks i got more picks i got a lot more stuff come check us out in stew cast but craig Go back to the NFL, whatever that is, uh, the No Fun League. I'm going to go crunch some Conference USA stats. We'll see you folks next week. Let's cash some tickets. And we're back. Thank you so much, Alan Studer. So now for your coverage of the No Fun League, the NFL. Let's Mm -hmm. get on into game day. Now, it's important to note that was recorded as of Wednesday evening. Rich and I are recording a Friday afternoon, so some stuff might have moved around. Just a little FYI, but you can take the gist of what you said. Um, so getting into the NFL, we're post-Thursday Night Football. The, the Steelers look terrible against the Browns, and now all eyes are on Sunday. Uh, instead of showing the Action Network, I, I decided to pull up DraftKings today. I don't really know why. Like, we're just going to change this up week by week. We don't have a sponsor. Uh, I don't owe anything, you know? Like, let's, let's just throw up what we feel like throwing up here. Uh, so let's, let's just go right down the line here. We'll talk about all these games. And we have 
the surprisingly 0-2 uh, Indianapolis Colts facing off against one of the best teams in the country, the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, five and a half points honestly feels a little disrespectful towards how good the Chiefs are and how bad the Colts have looked. Um, and w- w- by the way, we're going to keep the same format, spreads, touchdowns, and any anything bonus Rich feels like throwing your way. But, yeah. you know, I to me, I think this line's a little disrespectful. I think the Chiefs cover these five and a half points pretty easily, honestly. Until the Colts show me that they're better – than what they've been putting out on the field, I think my my strategy is going to be to bet against them. I like the Chiefs minus five here, five and a half here. Yeah, I mean, I love I love the Chiefs minus five and a half here. I also love that over. I mean, it's fifty and a half, but I mean, you know, the strength of both of these teams is is their offense. If you're looking at it, I mean, obviously the Colts have a really good offensive line. Uh, you know, Matt Ryan's supposed to be the guy. I thought he was going to come back Player of the Year. He's going to have to up his game if he wants to be. You know, in that category again. Uh, as far as any time touchdowns, I mean, like you said, the Colts are going to be playing from behind. So to me, that means the ball is going to be in the air. Uh, Pittman Jr. at uh, plus 145 is not, you know, a bad pick by any means. Uh, I also like Naeem Hines. Uh, he's plus 300 this week. Uh, when the Colts are down, the receiving back that's in the game is Naeem Hines. Uh, Jonathan Taylor is going to run it up the middle, but I mean, if they're if they're in the red zone, it's usually Hines that will vote for that uh, that touchdown. So one Colt, two Colts actually in a game where I think they have to play from behind. Uh, if you're going, you know, Chiefs, you know, the main guy Kelsey is minus one thirty. It's there's so many mismatch of people there. You just kind of don't know who Mahomes is going to target that week. Uh, it could be Clyde Edwards-Helaire, or Juju, or MVS or Hardman, he kind of just switches up based on how he feels. Um, with the Colts, kind of more straightforward. So, you know, you know who I like to score a touchdown on this list? So, Give me the Chiefs defense plus oh, 360. Yeah? I think that's good odds. Matt Ryan's been a turnover machine. I feel like they're going to be playing from behind. They'll have to sling it. I see a pick six. I, you know, I yeah. see a strip sack. I can see one of those happening. They and, happened and last I, week. They had it, a pick six last week. And I, you know, of the odds of the most, you know, the most likely touchdowns that I can envision happening, this is great odds. Give me the Chiefs defense plus three hundred and sixty to to get me get me a, some points. You're wild, man. I love it. Uh, yeah, man. I'm feeling bold. I'm feeling bold this week. I had a cold week last week. I'm gonna come out swinging. That's, Let's that's one uh, way to more than triple your money right there. So yeah, yeah. We're starting aggressive here. There Let's. Let's head down. I guess I'm just going to – I've never used this interface before. I guess we'll just click on down the line here. All right. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to go back and, and, and see. <laughs> but let's move on to the New Orleans Saints and the Carolina Panthers. Um, Saints put up a dud offensively against against the Bucks, and the Panthers still don't really look that good. So this game's kind of a toss-up to me. This line's at two and a half. I my gut is telling me that the Saints are the better team, so they'll likely win. But you know, I I don't know. This is a real toss up to me. Uh, I would kind of stay away from this one spread wise. If I had to gun to my head, pick a team, I'll I'll go with the Saints minus two and a half. But my my real advice is to is to do one of these guys. Yeah, I think honestly, I like the Panthers in this one because it's such a toss up. Just give me the points. You know, the the Panthers are the healthier team. Kamara obviously is still injured. Winston is kind of playing with a broken back at this point. And Slant Boy is is still Slant Boy and Michael Thomas. So for me, I would take the Panthers plus uh, plus two and a half. And I would probably go that under 41 right there. I like the under a lot. I was going to throw that out as an option. Yeah. On on the touchdown uh, point of view here, I listen. I think that Baker's really like throwing the ball over to to Robbie Anderson. Again, yeah. decent odds. It, it, he he seems to touch the ball a lot so far this season. So I would throw that out as an option. But ultimately, I I just don't like this game. So I'm not I I'm not going to be playing much on, on this one. I got you. So last week I, I gave you Taysom Hill and he did absolutely nothing. So this week I'm not I'm not going to play Taysom Hill, which means he's going to score. So I'm not betting Taysom Hill, but I I think that everyone should. Um, but the guy that I'm going with this week is Jarvis Landry uh, and DJ Moore. 
those are the two guys that you know jump off the page. I mean, Jarvis Landry normally does not get in the end zone. This year he does. So, you know, we're going to take that and run with it. Those are my two picks. All right. I uh, I should have gone back to this screen in between because now I'm going to need to, like, jump around and remember what was going on. We only did one, and it's 1 o'clock. Yeah, so, exactly. We're so we're going to – let's talk about the Bills and the Dolphins here. I, I think that the Dolphins are getting a lot of praise after what was – an incredible, credible comeback mm-hmm. against the Ravens. That said, they looked pretty duty for most of that game yep. until the fourth quarter. They're facing what we've said is the best team in the NFL, the Buffalo Bills, who have put on clinics. They also are very rested, right? They came off of a, a, a Thursday night game. So they've had the long week. Dolphins are on this emotional high. It's a five-point spread. And I don't really care that they made this crazy comeback. I think the Bills are a significantly better team. Uh, so I like the Bills minus five here. I also like the over because I do think both teams are, are capable of scoring. Uh, so 53, I'll take that over and I'll take the Bills minus five. So we agree on the Bills, but we disagree, uh, disagree on the over-under. I feel like the Bills' defense right now is like top-notch. Like they, they have a lot of injuries right now in the defense, but their their defense is pretty fierce. So I think you know Miami's not going to score a ton. No, uh, but the Bills got thirty five in the easy. <laughs> That's kind of where my my thought process is. Like. I don't I don't think the Dolphins score twenty. That's where my brain's going right now. So you know I just I like the under in this one because it's so high. And the Dolphins are probably going to come back down to earth this game. Um, yeah, look, looking at at the touchdown scorers, I mean. Diggs coming off of a monster performance. He's certainly hard to pick against, but you don't need us to tell you that yeah, Stephon Diggs and Tyreek Hill uh, are, are likely to get touchdowns. Who on this list do you do you like odds wise? I'm looking down here at Mr. Gesicki. Mm-hmm. You gave it last him. week. You gave it last week and he scored. So that that is one that you nailed last week. I mean, Tyreek being at plus money is pretty good, honestly. He's plus one ten, so you double your money there. Um Jalen Waddle being at plus 145 is also good. This is probably going to be a game where the Dolphins have to come from behind. And last week they came from behind with Waddle and with Hill. Uh, if you want like an outlier, uh, I really like Raheem Mostert out of all the running backs from the Dolphins. I feel like he's the most complete back at plus 175. Um, you know, and I'm giving you all. Dolphins because they're going to be coming from behind. You can pretty much bet any bill will probably score as well. But uh, you know they're just not great odds. Um, the better odds are definitely with the Dolphins this time because they're the worst team. I also, I'm going to throw out the defense here. I think two is a turnover heavy quarterback. They'll have yeah. to swing it, and this Bills defense is pretty beastly. Like yeah. I don't know when you look at the odds, this is the one I like the most, and I see it as being fairly likely that there's one turnover for a touchdown. So so you just parlay the Bills and the Chiefs defense. And I think it's going to happen. I think that's where my week's going. One dollar. One dollar. The one dollar defensive touchdown parlay. Let's that's make it. We got the Eagles. We got the Washington Commanders. Uh, commanders got beat down last week. Uh, and the they Eagles. They came back are, a little bit. They came back. They came back. But it, it was looking pretty bleak. Yeah. <laughs> for most of that game. And the Eagles are coming off of a real dominant performance. Spreads at six and a half. Um, this is a rivalry game, so that you know that adds a certain level of uh, uh, a a zhuzh and unknown to it. Um, but if I, you know, I, I think this is a little bit wide, but the Eagles minus six and a half, I think they're probably a touchdown better than where the commanders are currently. Um, but, you know, Maybe maybe you buy a couple of points here and you bet this more at like a minus uh, minus three or minus four um, because I think or you just take the Commanders plus six and a half. But I I, I think the Eagles are going to win. I just don't quite know the margin of victory. I mean, the Eagles might be the best team in the NFC right now, um, which this, is bold, but it's true. It is, yeah. I mean, the NFC is such an inferior product; it's insane. You could take like five lower level AFC teams to put them in the NFC and they're making the playoffs. Jets included. Um but yeah, I like the Eagles minus six and a half here. Uh it seems like Devonta Smith is kind of the forgotten man in, in Philly. 
Uh, AJ Brown's going to be the one who gets into the end zone, but Jalen Hurts is just vulturing touchdowns. He's minus 110 right now, and I wouldn't touch him because that's just not worth it. Antonio Gibson, I love Antonio Gibson. Receiving, rushing, plus 145 is pretty good odds there. I also like Logan Thomas in this. Um, Wentz has really found his tight end niche here. Uh, plus 270 is really good. Um, and I think, you know, he likes to feed every, every tight end he's ever had. So, uh, also Curtis Samuel, Curtis Samuel has scored in every single game so far. He's plus two, 225. So Curtis Samuel, Logan Thomas, AJ Brown, Antonio Gibson, that's three Redskins and an Eagle, but I still think the Eagles cover. Uh, commanders, not Redskins. Come on. What are you doing? Potato, potato. Put it in the comments. I'm going to throw out Jahan Dotson to get in the end zone. Plus 210. Um, last week he got in the end zone. Week before he got in the end zone twice. He seems to be a uh, – he just seems to, to be that big body guy who can go up and get it in the in the end zone. So I'm going to give out Dotson. There you go. F four commanders and partridge oh. in a pair of tree. Exactly. Heading back on over to the main screen and easing it on down the road, we got – the Cincinnati Bengals against the New York Jets. Bengals are 0-2, but on paper, this should be the chicken noodle soup game, as Marcus Taylor liked to say. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Jets are coming off of a huge win against the Cleveland Browns. I think they're, they're pretty confident. The offense looked really good last week. The defense kind of stepped up when they had to. I think there, there's still some work there defensively. Um, but... Listen, they beat the Bengals last year too. Uh, I don't know. That to me, this has this has a certain recipe cooking where I, I, I Jets plus six. I like it. I think if the Bengals win, it's going to be from a field goal because I they haven't looked good. The offense hasn't quite clicked. Um, it's going to come down to some kind of last minute heroics if they're going to pull out the win here. So I like the Jets plus six. Thirty-five to thirteen Bengals. I think Ooh, it's going to be, it's, 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 it's be a lacking. Um, I, yeah, I think, you know, this is definitely going to be a chicken noodle soup game for sure. Uh, and I think the Jets kind of want it to be because next week Wilson comes back. They kind of want Flacco to go out on a bad note. As weird as that sounds, I think they're all right with it. Um, so you like yeah. the over then, 35 to 13? I do. I yeah. do. I think it's mostly going to be Bengals. But uh, I think, you know, that minus six is, you know, you can put that in today. Um, you know, it, uh, you know, the Jets coming back last week, that made my year. They don't do that. They can get shellacked this game. That's all right. They shouldn't have won last week. We'll, we'll count it one and two. Any way you want to count it. A win's and a, a win. And you get Zach coming back next year against the next year. Oh my God. Knock on wood. Next week against the Steelers. Um, uh, so we'll just, we'll just count this one as a loss. But anytime touchdowns, give me Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson, that is plus 210, disrespectful. He's going to get in the end zone. Um, he is Flacco's favorite toy out there, 100%. Uh, I think he's definitely going to get in. Brees Hall is plus 290, also very disrespectful. Um, I don't know why he's at plus 290, honestly. And that's me hating all my team. I would I would definitely bet Brees. I don't know, I bet Garrett. I might even parlay them. Put that real quick. Let's see what the Brees and the Garrett combo is. Or 20 bucks on that, see what it is. Where am I? The, the stake all samples bottom. $20. That's a part of that. Well, okay. Well, we'll do it. We'll do it individually. Free Hall, 78 bucks. Scarrett Wilson, yeah. 62. You're looking at almost a $200 parlay. Do it. Oh, I got to log in to do the same thing. Oh. Whatever, it doesn't matter. We'll call we'll call it we'll call it thirty five to fourteen and those will be the two touchdowns. How about that? Free saw and Garrett Wilson. Uh and then the rest is gonna be a Bengals party. Um uh, Jamar Chase will probably get in. I think Joe Mixon will get in. Joe Mixon's been a little cold this year, but I think you know it's probably his time to shine. Uh Jets defense, their cornerbacks have been top notch. You look at Sauce and you look at uh DJ Reed. DJ Reed is statistically the third best cornerback in the NFL right now. Um, but the Jets just, they have a problem everywhere else. Their safeties are the bottom two in the NFL. Um, so if you want to do a tight end in this game, I mean, 
I don't know. You can Hayden Hurst at plus two eighty five would not be the worst pick there. Um, there are other tight end Drew samples out for the year, so it's kind of a one stop shop with Hurst, and the Jets cannot cover tight end. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I like the touchdown picks, but I gotta tell you, I I think this game's gonna be close. That the Jets haven't looked too bad. They I mean, haven't looked too bad. They were down thirteen last week with a minute and fifty five left, and you know, some magical stuff happened. I don't know if you can be magic against you know a team that was just in the Super Bowl, but I but hope. the Bengals haven't looked like they did last year. They have not. But I mean, you know, they're gonna snap out of it soon. And for the record, the Jets beat the Bengals last year. But that was Mike White. That was Mike White. That wasn't Flacco. Well, I mean, no one said Flacco had to play the whole game. (laughs) I if he doesn't play the whole game, something drastically went wrong. No no one said he had to play the whole game. It could be. Okay. Well, if he breaks the leg, let's go, White. Mike White. There we go. (laughs) Let's talk about the Detroit Lions and the Minnesota Vikings. This line's at six. I, my, I I believe last week I picked against the Lions, and then I sat down and watched that game, and I went, I never pick against the Lions. I always think the Lions are going to cover the spread. Mm-hmm. And and I sure enough, like, history was right. The Lions had a great game last week. Yeah. Um, Vikings, not so much. Give me the Lions plus six. Screw it. I, I'm, I'm always – I'm all in on Detroit. They may not win, but they're going to cover the spread. They're they're a competitive fun team. Yeah, I mean the the Vikings looked terrible last week, um, but again, you know the team they were playing is top notch. Uh, I do like the Lions plus six here as well. I think the Lions are an up and coming team. I don't know if they win, but I think that they will cover. Um, and I think that over under is atrocious. There's no way it's going to get close to fifty two and a half. Um, give me that un- under and. Yeah, that would be my bet of the week, maybe. There's no chance of that being near 52 and a half. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown scores every week. That's almost a free bet. You know Justin Jefferson's going to get in there, but that those odds are hideous. If you want good odds, go with Amon Ra at plus 135. Um, everyone else is kind of a coin flip. You know, if I'm being honest, Dalvin Cook didn't get in last week. Um, Swift has been really good this year. Uh, his odds right now are plus 110, so you can double your money. I like that as well. Adam Thielen has disappeared completely off the face of the earth. I think he only caught a pass in the last uh, drive last week. Um, so, yeah, I'm, if we're going anytime, I like Amon Ra, and we'll, we'll go Swifty. So, plus 110, plus 135. Yeah, I I think you hit the nail on the head. I, I wouldn't give out anybody else. So, I think we're just going to leave it at that. Um, big... I'm on Ross St. Brown fan. He's he's the best. Give me yeah. and g- give me Detroit plus six. Like no brainer. I think they could win. I don't know if they do, but they definitely could win. They have it in them. They could. They got the dog in them. We got the Baltimore Ravens. We got the New England Patriots. Patriots eat out a win last week. Uh, the Ravens gave up a win last week. But all that being said, um, I think one of these teams is in good form and the other is the Patriots the Patriots yeah. uh, so uh, I'll take the Ravens minus three here I I think that offensively the knowing the Patriots cannot keep up with what the Ravens are going to be able to put on the field uh, plus after giving up that loss last week you know the Ravens are going to look for a major comeback um it's it's really as simple as that I just think this is going to be a major comeback win. They need to kind of right the ship, right the wrongs of last week. Give me the Ravens minus three. I could see the over happening here because I think the Ravens are really going to put up 30-plus points, and I don't think the Patriots are going to get shut out. So give me the over. Um, What about you? Are we on the same page so far? Oh, 100%. I don't really understand this spread. I think think it's too low. Uh, I think that the Ravens definitely cover the three. you know, they almost beat the, the Dolphins last week, which is a better team than the Patriots. So uh, I think the Patriots going backwards, like you said. Anytime uh, touchdown scores, uh, Bateman is questionable if he plays. I like him a lot at plus 155. J.K. Dobbins is also questionable if he plays. I like him at 165. Uh, as far as the Patriots, it's just kind of a mismatch of people. I, I wouldn't necessarily give you any Patriot at this point because the only one that I would is is Harris and he's he's at the negative. So 
Uh, I like I like Dobbins and Bateman. Dobbins coming back fresh after being injured. He's going to be the bell cow, I believe. And then Bateman, he's showing that he could be a number one wide receiver, which is good for all Ravens fans. Yeah, they definitely need one of those. They haven't had a number one wide receiver in a, in a very long time. Definitely wasn't Hollywood. No. no. Let's head on down the line here. And we got the, the Raiders. We got the Titans. Raiders are minus two. Another team that gave up. A victory at the end there just couldn't couldn't seem to stop uh our 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 friend Kyler Murray who we were on record saying that we don't like last week. Um and you know the Titans don't really look like the Titans of last year. They they seem a little flat. The defense doesn't seem to be as aggressive. Uh you know Derrick Henry doesn't look quite as dominant. Um and Tannehill's not quite making the throws. They just don't look like the same team to me. That said, the Raiders haven't been able to close out games. They've been in games, but they're not they're not performing, you know? They're not they're not figuring it out at the very end. I think this is where they bounce back. Give me the Raiders minus two here against the Titans. Yeah, I mean the Titans right now are looking like a bottom ten team. Um, it's just nothing is clicking. Derrick Henry is not clicking. Derrick Henry, I think, had 25 yards rushing last week. Um, I mean, he got pulled at the end of the third quarter because they were losing so bad, which, again, is not a good thing. Raiders minus two is, is kind of a no-brainer for me. Um, last week, everyone scored against the Titans, so it's hard to pick a specific Raider that I like. Uh, but I always go for Darren Waller, um, you know, plus 160. He's always open, it seems. Devontae uh, Adams at plus odds. I mean, it's plus yeah. 100, but you see plus in Devontae Adams and you take yeah. it. You double that money and you run with it. But, uh, yeah, those are those are the two big ones. I mean, uh, Darren, Darren Waller and Devontae Adams, because I don't really know what the Titans are doing. So I don't I don't want to pick a single Titan at this point. Yeah, and that's sort of where I'm at, too. I, I used to be a big uh, a big Titan stand, but I don't know. They just they don't look like the Titans. They don't I look mean, like the Titans. This defense might actually score too. I mean, the, the Raiders defense at plus five fifty. I was just thinking that, but yeah. I was like, they can't give out three defenses on the show. You can do it. Round robin them if you take them. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, plus five fifty. I could see Tannehill throwing a pick six, one hundred percent. I can too, and five fifty yeah. is great odds. What's I mean, his, uh, what's his his uh, interception thing right now? Let's take a probably minus one ten. Uh... Player passing prop, passing prop, and it's down. Interceptions, half. Yeah, take that. Plus, I mean, it's negative money, but it's gonna happen. Minus one ten, Tannehill's throwing a pick. That plus the defense score. <laughs> yes, plus plus Adams and Waller, you'll be making some money. Yeah, there's some money to be made on this game for yeah. sure. Let's see what's next on the hit list. We already talked about the Saints and the Panthers. We got the Texans. We got the Bears. Why don't you kick this one off? Who do what? Are, what are you feeling in this one? I like the Texans across the board in this one. Uh, they're getting points, which I love. I just think that they have a better team. Um, you look at the Bears. They had one hot week in Week One, but that had a lot to do with the uh, the weather. Last week, the weather was normal, and they were back to normal. So uh, they got demolished by a Packers team that is, you know, kind of JV right now. Um, I really like Brandon Cooks to score in this one, plus 160. Uh, Damian Pierce needs to start getting the ball, the ball more. Uh, I think this is kind of a week that he does that. He's plus 170. Um, as far as the Bears go, you know, I always like to bet uh, Mooney, but he just he's not doing it. So... Uh, what's Fields' uh, interception right now? Because that one, I think, is a foregone conclusion. Probably ne negative one ten as well. Yeah. Oh, even worse. Negative one thirty. That's that's happening. So if you want to parlay that and, and Tannehill, by all means. Uh, Davis Mills, you know, he's doing the best he can with what he has. You know, he probably has a lame duck coach right now, and he's just got young pieces around him. Brandon Cooks, all he does is go over a thousand yards. All he does is make big plays. So the safest pick for me is the Texans plus three and Brandon Cooks anytime. I like it. I agree. Let's move on. 
except DraftKings is being a little screwy with me right now. So let's see. Here we go. This is a fun one, I think. We got the Jaguars coming off of a big win last week. Uh, we got the Chargers, who's one of your favorite teams in the NFL. Yeah. Again, I'll let you kick this one off. What are, what are you feeling in this? So for me, I would take the Chargers minus three here and just put heavy money on it and hope that Herbert plays because it's all contingent on him being questionable right now. Uh, the way he got hit last week, you know, he has rib, rib cartilage fractures. I mean, obviously, he's not going to be 100%. Um, but I feel like the second he is cleared for the game, this spread is going to jump to, you know, seven or eight. Um, I would I would take the Chargers right now and risk it for the biscuit. I think that they are definitely the better team. Uh, I really like Mike Williams this year. Mike Williams is kind of, you know, putting the team on his back with Keenan Allen being injured. Uh, Austin Eckler is always my guy as well. Uh, Jaguar side of thing, you know, Christian Kirk has scored every week. I, they're making that $17 million a year look like a bargain, which is crazy. Uh, Eckler's at minus 135. I wouldn't necessarily, you know, take him if, if you don't have to. Mike Williams plus 140. That's, that's an automatic for me. Christian Kirk at plus 205. I really love that as well. So, if you want the plus money, go Williams and Kirk and the minus three for the Chargers. Yeah, I love that. I'm all in on that. Uh, I'll throw James Robinson out as well. I, I like Robinson. Keep uh, the ETN off the field. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, I, I we'll, we'll keep an eye on the injury situation, but I think that could be a fun matchup um, for sure. The Jaguars look look pretty fun this year. I mean, you know, they're, they're seemingly kind of getting getting some things together. Here we go. We got the Rams minus three and a half against the Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals coming off a big win last week. So are the Rams. Um, division game. The division kind of seems up for grabs. In my mind, you know, I, I think the Cardinals, I don't want to say got lucky, but the Raiders kind of fell asleep at the end there and just kind of stopped playing. I, I think – I think the Rams, after getting embarrassed the way they did week one, kind of realized that they needed to wake up and they need to dominate. I think I think they're going to beat the dog poop out of the Cardinals. Um, oh, me, me too. Yeah. So give me give me the Rams minus three and a half here, um, and let's let's get into who do we think is going to score a touchdown. Well, you know, Cup is, but that's you know that's kind of a you know if you have a six leg parlay, you throw Cup in as the six leg and be like, oh, I want an extra four dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I, I like Allen Robinson. After a slow week one, he came back last week with a touchdown. Uh, I, I think that that's going to be more of the same. Um, and then if we're talking Cardinals, oh, man. I don't know, man. Dar uh, Dar Daryl Williams. Because Connor isn't 100%. I think Daryl Williams is going to vulture a touchdown at plus 145. Not going to say it, but I feel it. <laughs> not gonna say it, but I do feel it. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah, it, it might happen, man. I mean, the other way around happened last week, but I think I think you got it. That's that's plus four twenty five. I like that a lot. I feel the worst about this one of the four that I've given out, but I see it. Uh, I see it. I see it. So you got to put a dollar on the four and see what we got. Yeah. No, I I, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do like a two dollar parlay with like all of them and just okay. see what happens. You let me know. I'll be here for you. I'll give <laughs> you a dollar. <laughs> Perfect. We're in it. We're in it together. There you go. Here we go. We got the Packers. We got the Bucks. The Bucks. They won last week, and it ended up being a, a big win. But it was a very ugly game. An incredibly ugly game. Mike Evans suspended. Uh, the Packers. You know had the. Kind of looked like the Packers again, but they still don't have any weapons. Um, the spread is one, so we can call it a pick 'em. Yeah. I think I like the Packers here. This is uh, what the young kids call a mid off, you know, and as, <laughs> as a distinguished gentleman, I, I do not speak such terms, but everyone is out in this game. If you just look at the both teams, I mean, the Buccaneers. They don't have Mike Evans. They don't have Chris Godwin. Julio Jones is a game time decision. They had this the sign Cole Beasley, who was, you know, working at Pathmark to come <laughs> in as like a wide receiver one here. So to be it, fair, he was working at Pathmark like during the time when he was playing regularly too. 
Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I made I made sure to pick a, a supermarket that's probably no longer in business anywhere around anyone. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, on on the Packers, they're a little more healthy, but they're also without probably Randall Cobb, and they're without um, Lazard. I mean, like everyone's hurt. The number one wide receiver for the Packers right now is Dobbs, I believe. Um, so this is going to be a, an Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon game. So with that being said, I mean, I really like, um, I like the receiving yards for, for AJ Dillon. I, I mean, uh, for Aaron Jones. Jones. Yeah. He's at 27 and a half. I think, you know, he's going to have to throw to someone. I think they might go both go over that. That's why they're both negative. Um, and then anytime touchdown, I think I like both running backs, honestly. Um, because they're the they're the best people on the field this week for either team, you know Leonard Fournette. I mean, he could get in the end zone as well, but it's going to be a game that I just I probably don't want to watch, to be honest with you. And normally, this is like one of the games of the year, but just based on the injuries and you know the Packers just not adding appropriate offensive weapons, it's going to probably be a dud. Yeah, I, I I have to agree. Give me the running backs, and uh, it looks like I'll be taking a nap at four o'clock. Uh, here we go. We got the Falcons. We got the Seahawks. Uh, the Seahawks, after a pretty good-looking game week one, um, had a pretty not-so-good-looking game week two. Um, and the Falcons, again, kind of the same thing. Pretty good-looking game week one, not-so-good-looking game week two. So this is a battle of uh, which team is going to be a little less mediocre this season. And uh, I don't know. I'm leaning towards the Falcons. What about you? So this game is called the At Least You Tried game because <laughs> they both suck. But Did you, know, you write them ahead of time? Did you no, no. This is oh, popped in my oh, head. Oh, in my head. We're going to we're gonna have to put, write these down. Yeah. Um, this, these teams are at full strength and just are garbage. Um, so, I mean, I like the Falcons just simply because I, I don't we know. We need Gino. Yeah. I mean, you know, Mariota has legs. Um, you talk about Patterson, he, he's got, you know, he's got the tools to get in the end zone and he's plus money. I think you're starting running back team plus money is always fun at plus one thirty. Penny, you know, he's kind of dropped off a little bit. Uh, can't even put Metcalf on any fantasy team because, you know, Gino doesn't know how to throw to him. Drake London's been, you know, a, a candidate for rookie of the year. Uh, I think if you're looking for another Falcon, Drake London's one that will probably get in the end zone. Uh, Ken, uh, Kyle Pitts, just because he hasn't scored, is plus 215. I like those odds right there. Um, that's about it. So just based on me picking all the Falcons, um, I think I'm going to go with the Falcons. And don't I look, I look you want to go on the defenses. <laughs> yeah. Do not pick the Falcons defense. I don't know if they know who they are at this point. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Name two people on the Falcons defense real quick. I can't. Exactly. Don't pick them. Don't pick them. Yeah. I can't, but I want to say it, but no, I can't. Yeah, um, no. You know, it, it, and we've said this a couple of weeks, Mariota trusts his feet a lot, plus 200. He didn't get in last week. He got close once or twice. I, you know. Yeah, he's gonna trust his feet more often than not. So I'll, I'll throw that out as well. Give me the Falcons plus one, and uh, let's let's keep the nap at four at the four o'clock uh, block going. And the strong. under under forty two. We'll throw it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Might as well make some money while we're catching up on some Z's. Exactly. Uh, here we go. We got Sunday night football. We got the Jimmy G led San Francisco 49ers, as it always should have been. Yes. Uh, against. The Denver Broncos, who look ugly, yes, they straight up just look. It it it's not working. Whatever they've put together, it's not working. 49ers are favorites here by one and a half. I think that I think they're gonna win. I think they they win pretty easily with Jimmy G at the helm. He's I I like him a lot as a quarterback. I always have. Um, whether right or wrong, I always thought he was good. Um. And now I think they have the right kind of pieces together where they're going to dominate this game. I don't think that the Broncos are going to be able to keep up. Uh, I also like the under here. I mean, I, I could see this being like a 21 to 10 type of game. Um, but that's that's where I'm leaning. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I think the 49ers made the playoffs the second that Lance went down. Um, you know, they're going to fight for their division. Uh, they can actually fight at this point for the NFC. 
I mean, I think they're they're a definite complete team when it comes to Jimmy G being the guy in charge. I'll take the 49ers uh, minus one and a half. Uh, Jeff Wilson coming in this week. I added him to all my fantasy leagues. Uh, I think he's he's going to be kind of the bell cow. I mean, there is no bell cow on the, on the 49ers, let me say that. But he'll have the majority of the carries um, with his counterpart, Elijah Mitchell, going down for two months. So plus 115, again, I like the starting running back at plus 115. Uh, if you're looking at the other side of things, the starting running back for the, the Broncos, Williams, is plus 140. I like that as well. Uh, Debo and, and Jimmy G have a love affair that you know conquers Titanic. So I mean, I, I like I like uh, Debo at plus one twenty. Kittle is probably coming back this week. Um, you know, if you played fantasy last week last year or uh, you know bet last year, you know that Kittle usually gets in the end zone. So he is at plus one eighty five. Um, if I have to throw a, Bron- a Bronco out there besides um, Williams, I'm going to go with Albert O. Plus two eighty. Yeah, pretty much all the names out there. Yep. <laughs> I like it a lot. Give me, give me the Niners. I think that should be. I, despite you know, I think the Broncos won't put up much of a, a, a fight. I think that'll be a fun game for Sunday Night Football. Yeah, um, I agree. And now let's close things out. Monday night we got the Dallas Cowboys, the uh, the Cooper Rush led Dallas Cowboys. Wolf. Against the surprisingly two and L New York Giants, um, I have no idea. <laughs> that's that's where I'm at because I I don't know how the how the Cowboys performed well last week. I don't know how the Giants are two and L. It doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. Um, so I'm I'm just gonna watch this one for fun. Uh, if I had to go with my gut. I think the Giants probably win because I, I, I don't know. I don't think Cooper Rush has has two uh, two solid games in him, but that's just me. What about you? I'm gonna call this game the Monday Night Miserable. <laughs> um, it's like where did where did these three wins come from? It doesn't make sense, like you said. Um, I'm gonna go with the Giants too, which makes me throw up in my mouth a little bit. <laughs> um, it's just you know they're healthier, which. Their starting quarterback is kind of like a Cooper Rush, but I mean he's he's the guy. Um, anytime touchdowns are really like Saquon, um, and the, the, that's probably it. Um, Dalton Schultz is hurt. Normally I always go with Schultz. It's just he's he's battling an injury right now. Like he's not going to be a hundred percent. And literally I can't pick anyone else on that list. Maybe Noah Brown. Noah Brown has has showed that he's he's competent. Uh, but Michael Gallup is coming back. It, it's really a toss up. Just give me Saquon, and that's kind of it. Yeah, that's where I'm at too. I mean, I just I don't have the uh, the confidence in anyone in this game. Um, yeah. So I'll take Saquon. I'll take the Giants. I, honestly, I I have no idea on the over under. This game could be ten to three, or it could be forty five to thirty one. Like I I just I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so. I don't know. I'll tune in if I fall asleep Monday night. If I fall asleep Monday night, uh, that'll that'll be that'll be it. Yeah, uh, that's it for NFL Week Three, Rich. Cool. That's it. Week two, was, week two was incredible. I gotta just say that Week Two was probably some of the best football I've seen since the playoffs last year. Like the comebacks, like it was enjoyable to watch. I did have about five old fashioned, so it was super enjoyable to so watch. Even better. Even better. I was like on the edge of my seat. The second the Jets won, I sobered up immediately. So it's like I drank nothing. Um, <laughs> I was like, jumping up and down like oh, a yeah. crazy person. What a what a game that was. What a game. We got to savor that. You know, probably rewatch that game every every week they lose, which will probably be another thirteen weeks. Uh, but yeah, let's let's win some money. Thursday was nice, even though we don't do Thursday. I mean, you got to look at you know Bet three six five. They got the new super boost because they're trying to get customers. Caesars realizes that their super boosts were kind of dumb and they got back to normal with what they did a couple of years ago. Uh, so just look for the super boost, double up your money, take the easy bets and just kind of build your bankroll. Good advice. Good stage advice from, from Rich. Uh, let us know in the comments below. Are you interested in Thursday night football content? Let us know. You can follow us on Twitter at ads on truth. Uh, our handles are here below as well at Seagor 74 at Coda five, two, two. Uh, if we get enough people asking about it, you know, maybe we'll start making some content. We'll, we'll, we'll see. So let us know in the comment player below. 
or fire away on Twitter if you're looking for some more Thursday night football uh, content or maybe Sunday pregame content. We did some live shows last year uh, that were pretty fun. Uh, so, yeah, let us know in the comment player below. Thank you so much for listening to the show this week and every week. Thank you to Peter Thomas Ford to tell Drew Cotney, Jonathan Kinchin, and all the fine folks at the In The Money Media Network. Make sure to follow along on Twitter. Thank you so much, Rich, for your expert analysis. Thank you so much, me, for my expert hosting and posting abilities. That's going to do it for Odds Honest Truth. Until next time, allegedly, that'll do it.